This is uh, Jim Fetzer, your host on The Real Deal. In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade. It looks like one of those scenes of an old building being purposely dynamited and blown. When we are successful, I'm just a patsy. And we will be. We're ready to make, uh, to come to the microphone, so we'll listen up. A new world order. So my name's Robbie Parker. It might have appeared that way, but from my close-up inspection, there's no evidence of a plane having crashed anywhere near the Pentagon. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Live from the Media Broadcasting Center. 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 Welcome to the Opt Out Show. This is the new JFK show number 78. God damn. All right. Um, we've got some serious issues, man. Might, might as well get right to it. All right. I was in an unusual situation this weekend, and the reason I'm wearing my coonskin hat is we're <laughs> opt hunting tonight. We're out on the hunt. So let's see how many we can bag tonight. All right. So I was in a very unusual situation because I know Chris Milligan really well. I know Lorian Fenton, who I'll actually be on her show tonight to promote my uh, radio network, Firehorse Radio Network. All right, but the situation is, is that, of course, I'm a musician and I like to help out as much as I can. And I volunteered to do sound for this conference probably about six months ago before they even knew if they were going to have it or not. So I ended up being a sound man and the audio guy. So anytime the microphone was messing up, if they were too far from the mic, whatever it is, I had to run up and fix it. In fact, Joan Mellon was talking, and she started to fall down, so we had to move a chair over and let her sit down, and I had to fix the mic. Typical roadie stuff, sound man type things. However, I don't think anybody knew that uh, – I did a weekly show with Dr. James Fetzer, Larry Vera, Don Fox. They just thought I was the sound dude. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Gary. <laughs> All right, so I was forced. Does that make, it, does that make you a covert agent? <laughs> well, I will say I was not. I did not do anything. I didn't plant anybody in the audience to say anything. I literally was at work, and I was 12 hours a day. And it was a real job. Let me tell you what, you know, the next speaker, the, the Skype connection will won't work. You know how it was in Santa Barbara there, Dr. Fetzer? You know, you remember that? Yeah, sure, I do. I do. I do. All right. Well, it wasn't an easy job, but I pulled it off. So regardless of how much of an op they were or how much of a truth teller they were, I had to hook their butts up and let them talk. <laughs> <laughs> So mm -hmm. here's the situation. I've been to quite a few conferences, but I've never sat through the conference from the beginning to the end, three days worth, 12 hours a day, because I had to, and I was getting paid. So I like that. I like that getting paid part, Gary. Yeah, that's the only way you could have got me to sit through Robert Groden, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so I just have to say, well, let, I'll just save it for later. All right, so you guys wanted to go over the conference and um, kind of talk over each one and let me give my insights? Yeah, yeah. We can begin in the beginning. Tell us about the overall structure of the conference. How was it set up? Well, first of all, we had made an historic discovery a few days later, and Larry had asked me to bring the this uh, new information to the attention of quite a few researchers out there and we know what it is it's the overlay it's a brand new thing if you don't know about it you can find it on chances site on my site 100 percent proof of oswald in the doorway so i came packing bearing gifts so i had my little <laughs> mac mini in one hand and i had my little stick over here and i i went to ed tatro i said ed larry has something he wants you to see and he said, ah, I saw it already. Ah, it's a 50-year-old thing. Man, there's no proof of that. This is old. 50-year-old 50 thing? That's what he told me. Uh, right. He said, ah, it's a bunch of stuff. I said, but wait a minute, Mr. Ed. I said, wait, we had – you just gave a speech about Ed, Jim Garrison for an hour and a half. 
Jim Garrison says on camera that it was Lee in the outs, Lee in the doorway. I said Harold Weisberg said the same thing. Beverly Brunson, Shirley Martin, Penn Jones, and he said, and I can recognize the fallacy thanks to you, Doctor Patrick. He said I knew all of those guys personally. I said, but wait. Are you saying Jim Garrison didn't know what he was talking about? And I said, well, wait, what about what about Will Fritz's notes that was found in 1993? Does that mean nothing? And uh, he scoffed. So I'm here to say, for the most part, Larry's work was scoffed at, not welcome, unimportant, and 50-year-old um, hogwash. Gary, let me, let me ask you this. If I were organizing this conference... I might have had a segment on Zapruder film uh, authenticity, proving the limo stop, the riders, and all that, that the film had been massively edited. I would have had another segment on Oswald in the doorway going through the mountain of evidence. I would have another segment on the shooting teams, including the Deltax, where George Herbert Walker Bush was supervising Nestor Tony Escadro firing three shots with a man liquor Carcano. Uh, you know, I would have organized it topically like that. How was this conference organized? Okay, now you can forget it about the Zapruder film alteration, and you can forget it about any Lee in the doorway. Now, these ladies, um, Sarah Peterson and Katana Zachary, they they went on about Oswald in the doorway. But to be honest with you, I was paying attention. I thought, and I don't know what they said really, but um, the closest you got to any any uh bush george bush stuff was russ baker now you remember last year right dr fester with russ baker we had the ride in the in the cab and i tried to tell him about some boston marathon and he said oh you know he didn't know anything about it and then we wrote an article well there was russ baker again and believe it or not my band played at you at oswald's birthday party you can see it online Type in Oswald's birthday party 2015. You can see GK ripping on guitar. But anyway, it was kind of strange because we were playing in the club. And then we went outside and Russ Baker and Daniel Hopsicker came up to me and said, dude, you freaking band rocks, man. Yeah, I can't believe it, man. Y'all one of the best bands ever, you know? And I looked at him and I said, you, have you had enough time to look into the Boston Marathon? And then he looked, he jumped on me. So I don't think he really recognized me. And he said, we did 63 articles on that. Haven't you checked my website? And I said, yeah, it's pretty spooky there. I said, that's all mainstream articles. And I looked at him and Hopsicker and I told them both. I said, if y'all don't say that the Boston Marathon was a complete hoax. I was looking him dead in the eye. We almost came to blows. I'm telling you, Hopsicker and me and Russ Baker, we were about to go at it in the parking lot. Gary, it's ridiculous. This is the most blatant, most amateurish false flag attack in the history of the United States. We've had yeah, some right. duties. I, but here's what happened. When I told him, I said, look, if y'all guys can't figure out that Boston Marathon was a complete hoax and all of your st stories are mainstream junk, then you need to quit and go home. And then here's what Russ did. He said, oh, I see where this is going. And he put his hands in his pocket and he went back in the club. He sees where this is going. Don, Don what's your take on what you're hearing here about? It's kind of flooring, if you ask me. Yeah, I've talked to Gary about this. We had a nice little conversation last night, and uh, I told him you know, I, I missed the first couple minutes of the show, but you know, I was sure. telling Gary like I was telling Gary last week when he told me he was going to be at this thing, and I, the, my first thought was. What the hell are you doing there, Gary? I wouldn't even show up for this thing. He's like, well, you know. Uh, uh, he was making uh, a few bucks. He was running the sound system. Well, His band was yeah. playing. Yeah. And, okay, yeah he, was, right. he was soaking it in, right right, and left, soaking it in. I, but after we played Secret Agent Man with, with St. John Hunt, think about that. I'm playing with Chris Milligan. He's wailing on the harmonica. St. John Hunt, whose dad has got to be one of the biggest spooks of all time. And what song did we play? Secret agent man. <laughs> of course. <laughs> that had so, to be a highlight. That had to be a highlight of the whole conference. All right. So imagine this. We're in a club called the River Shack, which is a, a really, really famous club from way back. Lee and I used to go there. But the place is hopping. It's packed. There's people everywhere. And there have never been more spooks assembled in one room. 
in a long time. All right, so I got all these people. We got Russ Baker. We got Roger Stone. We got Ed Haslam, which who is a truth teller. And over here, we got Hopsicker. You know, just all these ops all over the place. Well, Roger, and, what, what, was Roger the, what was Roger addressing, Gary? I'm interviewing him tomorrow about his new book on the Clinton's War on Women, but he published an earlier book about uh, LBJ being responsible for the death of JFK. So he seems to me to be a good man. Mm -hmm. Well, we've, we've got our tentacles up on stone, okay? We don't have 100% definitive here, but all I can say is this may mean nothing, but if you are a former writer for the New York Times, Washington Post, blah, 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 you ain't fooling me anymore. But anyway, I'm going to leave that one up to you, okay? What I believe, and Don and I talked about this, that there are these people like Baker, Hopsicker, and um, the one you're talking about the, who have written for Roger the mainstream Stone, guy. But yeah. suddenly we're told that they wrote a bad article and now they're, they've been uh, exercised from, the, from, from news, you see? And now they're out there doing good reporting. That's a bunch of baloney. They're limited hangouts. Gary, was, was there an organizational principle to this conference? I mean, I was talking about, you know, you might have had one about LBJ and who was responsible for the assassin. What about the shooters and where they were located? Uh, what, what about the doorman? What about the limousine? You didn't have anything like that? The doorman was banned. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's what I told. Yeah, that's exactly what I told Gary this week. I said, "Hey, look, Gary." But before he, he told me he was doing this thing, I says, "Well, hey, look, we we were talking about Oswald and, and Larry Rivera and uh, Ralph and Kay and all their work." And I said, "Look, the one thing that they just can't have is Oswald in the doorway." Okay, they can. There can be debates over the single bullet theory. That's fine. You know, you can debate. Uh, you know, Jack. You go to Mexico. Did he go to Mexico? Yeah, that's fine. You can talk about that stuff, but Oswald in the doorway. That's. <laughs> I felt like it was a gong show. <laughs> but, 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 but this is the most important development of recent times in JFK research. That and Larry's work that's on the why. newcomer interview. These are the two major developments of the last five years, for God's sake. Not at this conference. We have a conference in 2015 that doesn't address them. Okay, I'm not here. The Z film was not allowed. I'm not saying not allowed, but there wasn't anyone talking about it. And I did say to Chris, I said, look, man, why don't you let me show this at the end? He said, oh, no, 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 no. None of the Oswald. And he said, it's not Oswald in the doorway. Forget about it. We're not going there. But, you know, my, my, I've heard that when Judith was shown, she said, of course. She said she'd already proven he was in the doorway. I talked right. to him about that. I said, Chris. Judy wrote an article. He says, well, it doesn't mean that I agree with everything Judy does. Even oh, though I is, he now, is he now the, the expert rather than Judith? Is Chris Mulligan now claiming he's the expert on JFK rather than well, Judith? We're only talking no, about no. Oswald in the doorway. No. No, Jim, isn't Chris Mulligan uh, uh, on the OIC uh, page? I, I thought he was on the OIC page. What's going on I there? Think he, is. I think he is on the OIC page. That's a good okay. question. He's already well, subscribed to the proposition. Look, man, I was there. I asked him that. I'm not letting anybody get away with this. So, so maybe as chairman, I need to uh, look into that. Yeah, I think you ought to look into that. We would I'll tell that. you what he said. Here's what he said. I believe Oswald is innocent, but I don't think it's him in the doorway. <laughs> yeah. Well, then I, that doesn't qualify him for the OIC. That's right. That's right. Uh -oh. And here he got a former chair, me and the present chair, Larry, and we're both agreeing that that doesn't mean he should be a member of the OIC if that's as far as it goes. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's the uh, number one mantra of the organization. We, you know, we have, have a to... statement that spells it out that he's that's innocent right. because he was in the doorway. That's right. That's I mean, right. how ridiculous right. can you get? That's right. Yeah. All right. So let's go down the list. And then Larry's got some stuff at the end of the show. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Tell All us right. Yeah. Chris Milligan was the first speaker. He's pretty much the one that put it on. I believe Chris, Chris Milligan is a truth teller. I also had a serious question for him. I said, how in the hell did you have Judy Baker at 9 a.m. and Joan Mellon at 10 a.m.? <laughs> and I, I said, Dr. Fessner and I have done 
two radio shows defending Judith from Joan Mellon. And he said, I'm a peacemaker, Gary. He said, it was said that they would never appear in the same room. Well, here they are back to back. I'm a peacemaker. So that's what he said. So I, I like Chris. That, that, um, that, that doesn't cut it, Gary. That doesn't cut it. A peacemaker. Ridiculous. You got one woman who's trying to cut Judith's throat, and then you got Judith there. That doesn't work. They were they were following each other. That's something's very wrong there. Right. Okay, so on to David Denton. I respect David Denton. He's a good, honest, straight up researcher. He is. Uh, he is. Okay. What about what do you guys know David Denton? I am not familiar with his work. Mm -hmm. Well, he he basically put on the conference last year. The, the good conference. So he was the one. He went on a conference at a small college in uh, Illinois. That, that, that's where Ed Tatro said he'd spoken to Marina about the shirt, and she remembered having washed Oswald's shirt, which he was arrested, and which he was wearing in the doorway. That was significant, I thought, and very positive, big plus for Ed Tatro to be reporting that. Mm -hmm. Except Ted doesn't buy Oswald in the doorway, though, does he? No, not yeah, at all. I, I, I don't know. No, he scoffed at it. I talked to him personally. I looked him right in, right in the eye. I said, come on, man. I said, that's what I said. I said, look, your entire presentation was about Jim Garrison, but he, he, he didn't know what the hell he's talking about with Lee in the doorway. I said, look, man, you can see the, the, the button. You can see the safety pin. It's, it's, it, so I'm just telling you that these researchers, they seem to have looked under every single rock that there could ever be, but they ain't looking under this one. So that's how I see it. I, so I, I just wanted to uh, ask you, Gary, how is it possible that all these people uh, supposedly had already seen this research when it was only a couple of days old? You know, how did how how do you figure that they got around to seeing this and automatically uh, uh, rejecting it? Uh, when it was only a couple of days old, what, what, did they have like a meeting or something? You know, I, I don't understand. I don't, Can you explain that? I don't know because I didn't show it to anyone. They had already <laughs> seen it. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like we're in trouble. All right. So then we had Judy Baker up next. All right. So Dr. Fetzer, go ahead with Judy Baker. Well, I mean, you know, Judith has done some brilliant work. I mean, your, her article which I entitled Judith Very Baker Cements Oswald in the Doorway is a direct refutation of Robert Grodin's work for the HSCA, where Grodin was assigned the task of determining whether the man in the doorway was or was not Lee Oswald. And he claimed back, claiming he returned to them with a report claiming that the shirt, the pattern of the shirt, Billy Lovelady was wearing, where he even got that wrong, because he's talking about the red and black checkered shirt, not the red and white vertically striped shirt Billy was actually wearing in which the FBI photographed him on 29 February 1964. But the red and black checkered shirt, he said that was a closer match to the doorman shirt than was Lee Oswald's shirt and Judith by a much more sophisticated and scientifically impeccable study and comparison demonstrated precisely the opposite to be true. And this leaves me wondering, Gary, why she can feel, continue to feel fondness and affection for Robert Grodin, but he's been a principal player on the other side and deceiving the JFK community in that role. I mean, it's very stunning to me. Right, right. Uh, very uh, unusual. The whole <laughs> thing was... Well, uh, 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 Gary uh, uh, reported uh, that uh, the only person who actually... Uh, accepted the overlay uh, technology was Judith, saying that, you know, that I knew that all along. <laughs> well, so. I have to give Jim Mars a semi pass right now. I told Jim Mars about it. I said, the game is over. We're using this as our litmus test. I told him all that. I said, we're using this as our litmus test to who's real and who's not. I told Ed Tatro that. I told Jim Mars that. And at the very end, he actually said that there may be some new evidence leading to Oswald being in the doorway. So stay tuned. He said he hadn't seen it. And um, he said we all have to stay open to the idea that Oswald may be the one in the doorway. So it looks like we're going to have to bring Jim Mars kind of kicking and screaming through the door, huh? 
That's no, kind of no. odd, isn't it? That's kind of odd that Jim, after all these years, would have any hesitation about it. I mean, he and I collaborated on an article demonstrating that the backyard photographs were yeah. fabrications and fakes, where you have this group at Dartmouth, of all places, where the FBI is funding a laboratory for this fellow, Hanny, uh, Hanny Farad, who is clearly in mm -hmm. awe publishing the, on the authenticity of the backyard photographs by focusing on just those elements that haven't been faked. He focused on the shadow under the nose in an earlier article, and now you have people who are saying, well, they aren't fake because a man actually could anatomically have the ballot shown of the person in the person in the photographs. But, you know, no, no, while he looks odd in the photographs, no one has ever claimed that that was proof that they were fabricated. We have a host of other evidence of that including that Oswald's face is exactly the same through a whole series, that there's an insert line between the lower lip and the chin, that the chin is not Lee Oswald's chin, that the fingertips of the right hand are all cut off, that if you use the, the newspapers as an internal yardstick, you determine the individual in the photograph is too short to be Lee Oswald, which means either they use someone who was too short or more likely when they created the photograph, they introduced the newspapers too large, Jack White established that. So I republished this article that Jim and I had originally published back in 2011. Yeah, the bump on the forearm. Uh, that, the uh, bump on the forearm, he'd noticed for Roscoe White being that's the right. that's Roscoe's right. got that's the right chin and he's got the right bump on the arm. Well, uh, we have uh, some uh, uh, overlays that we uh, applied the same technology that Chance has that maybe uh, later on he can. Uh, well, you know, we can uh, play them now, Larry. We can play them now. Let's go through all the people and we'll speed it up and then we'll go to that. So all right. I think this is so significant and it fits so well, Gary. We'll come back to, we'll come back to the riff raff because that's what you're talking about. Yeah. The <laughs> now, okay. We okay, we'll do that, but we have a new name. We're the freaking JFK Posse. <laughs> the Posse, okay. Posse. Chance, have you got it so you can play it? Okay, why don't you go ahead and play it, Larry? And you can talk about it. Tell us what you have here. Well, well, we have uh, we have uh, actually three uh, items here to discuss briefly. Uh, the first one is a uh, comparison of the New Orleans of the two mugshots of the between the New Orleans PD and the Dallas PD. Uh, obviously, the first uh, the New Orleans uh, from when he was arrested uh, in that fracas with Carlos Bringier, and then uh, compared with the Dallas Police Department photograph, uh, the mugshot, and when we overlaid both of these, uh, lo and behold, they are exactly. We got some heavy person. breathing there, Chance. So I don't know what the deal is. I think it's Gary. Do you, what happened no, to your head? It's not me. You, you, no, it's not me. Okay, uh -huh. go ahead, Larry. Continue. Anyway, anyway, the uh, the comparisons and the overlays between the NOPD and the DPD are exactly. I mean, within millimeters of uh, of, uh, of of each other, and as far as uh, uh, them being exactly the same image, uh, which proves that the person that was arrested in New Orleans and the person that, that was arrested in uh, Dallas were one and the same person. I mean, excellent. That's very good. That's very good. That's very good all by itself, Larry. That's right, because that is your control image. Now, when we go and we overlaid both of those in the, independently over the uh, back. Uh, the back the backyard photograph. Uh, I mean, it was just amazing the difference where uh, the uh, left side, which would be the right side of the head, uh, protruded in such a way that we're talking about two to three inches uh, much larger. Uh, it was totally amorphous, and uh, the chin, obviously, uh, when uh, we ran it all the way through, the chin, uh, the the cleft that uh, Lee Oswald had there. Uh, was clearly visible where at where uh, the other one was a totally flat chin. And right, right, right. this is brilliant. You've developed a whole new methodology for testing propositions about identity of suspects. And that's right. Photos. This is absolutely sensational, Larry. Yeah, that's Good right. Question. And, and since we're talking about that, uh, I went in and obtained a lot of information and and uh, and uh, sources on face recognition and uh, and forensic science. And uh, the it's been completely accepted. It, it is a, a branch of, of forensic science that is al already very mature. 
And uh, the uh, procedure of the comparison can be qualitative or quantitative using relative or absolute dimensions. Uh, in morpho morphological comparison, the location and size of facial features is measured relatively, not absolutely. If the perspectives of the questioned and known images are similar and the position of the head is similar, the image depicting the known individual can be scaled to that of the questioned individual by using interpupillary distance or other consistent features within the image, interpupillary being uh, the eyes, okay? An overlay of the scaled known image and the questioned image can then be made in order to determine the relative alignment of other facial features that, it, that are consistent. This overlay of images is also refer, referred to as the superimposition method and can be performed with video editing or image processing equipment. That would mean our Photoshop and our GIMP programs and whatever. Okay, a variation of the overlay approach is a photogrammetric, is a photogrammetric one, either side-by-side -side images and or, and or the superimposition uh, method. And uh, when you put side by side, you can draw lines uh, across from one image to the other, you know, that cross uh, uh, into the jaw lines, the pupil, the nasal bridge, et cetera. Now, both, for both the uh, photogrammetric and overlay approach, the images must be of the same perspective. But the key difference is that an overlay allows one to view the length and width simultaneously, although viewing the lines in the photogrammetric approach leaves more to human perception as one looks across both images. Superimposition can appear to be doctoring of, of evidence if not properly explained, which we have done. Scaling implies changing the images to affect alignment, but the method is sound. And that's well, of course, well, well, of course the method is sound. I mean, you know, why would anyone challenge it? It's obviously appropriate. It, 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 and it's I, you? I, 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 I like your spelling it out, Larry, but it was obvious to me from the beginning that this was a sound methodology. There was no reason to doubt it. I'm very disappointed with the responses that Gary's going to continue well, to tell us coming from this conference by individuals who appear to be either methodologically unsophisticated or uh, deliberately dissembling in denial, wanting to deny the evidence, which is so very forceful here. Chance, that's right. That's Chance right. has a clip now. He wants to show exactly what you're talking about here, Larry. Chance, am I right? You got it? Okay. In a recent episode of The Real Deal on NBC, Larry Rivera created some overlays using the Ulchins photo. And this photo that you see here, you can see just barely in the back with the red circle around it, a man in the doorway. Enhanced and zoomed in, it looks a little bit more like this. Now this guy right here is the man in question. A lot of people have said that it's Billy Lovelady and some other people have commented that it's Lee Harvey Oswald. So Larry Rivera, he basically took the still frame from the door and known shots of Lee Harvey Oswald, known shots of Billy Lovelady, put them in an overlay let them kind of create an image as you see them uh, basically having different levels of transparency and the, the show went on for about uh, two hours and I know it's a lot sometimes for people to watch a whole show or to pass around a whole show of, of that length so this is just a small clip to show you the first one this one here is doorway man as a still frame with an overlay of Billy Lovelady. As you can see here, that isn't a perfect match, or it is noticeably different. The second one, this is using a photo of Lee Harvey Oswald with an overlay of Doorway Man, creating a much smoother transitioning image that we see here. Once again, you can check out the entire episode in the description below. Stay tuned to The Real Deal YouTube. It has all kinds of updates on this every Wednesday on the new JFK show. Thank you. All right, Larry, go ahead and tell us what we got there, man. Okay, what, what we did was we created a control animation which uh, depicts the NOPD 
and the DPD images, the mugshots of Lee Oswald, which when we lined everything up, everything came out perfect. The eyes, the interpupillary distance, the face, the shape of the face, the head, uh, everything, the ears, the chin with the cleft, particular uh, specific cleft that Lee Oswald had. And then what we did was we ran the experiment of, of comparing each one of those individually to the backyard photo. Uh, when we uh, compared the uh, New Orleans PD photo, uh, which we prepared a, a special animation here, and we outlined the incredible protrusion on the right side of his of his head, which is the left one. We when you look at it from the front, and uh, the the amount of space there that protrudes is just incredible. That's why I call it like a so, pumpkin head. So, so Larry, you're telling me the man in the back in the in the backyard photographs has a larger head than Lee Oswald. Much much larger and this is something that uh, jack white apparently he did such a fantastic job you know being the first one to really study these uh however he he never he didn't have the technology to overlay the way that we did right and right using, and using the other the control images of the uh of the nopd and the dpd and and the uh amount of the anomaly is is just it's just uh, mind boggling. We have posted this, but uh, I prepared. Yeah, 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 you're saying the the discrepancy between the authentic Oswald and how his cranium would have filled out the backyard man, and the actual backyard man is enormous, and it leaves no room for doubt that someone was standing in for Lee Oswald, just as he claimed, just as he said to Will Fritz about when shown one of these photographs. Well, yeah, and then not, not only that, it proves that the doctoring of the photograph that they had to perform was uh, was what it did. It, it created uh, a, a photograph or, or a, 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 an image that was just uh, physically impossible. But because the le the neck, the right side of the neck, uh, just protrudes in a way that was uh, probably a couple of inches, and then going around the ear. Uh, extends probably another couple of inches, and then the head on that right side, uh, left side, when you're looking at it from the front, uh, is just totally amorphous. And uh, when th th this uh, just happened in, in the last couple of days, and I circulated that, uh, Ralph has already posted it. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, the one that has the, uh, the red outline in the middle uh, in the, uh, when you run the animation. Right. And and I and I stayed on that one on the that's the fifth frame of the animation and I kept it there for a couple of seconds so that our audience could appreciate the the incredible amount of space there uh, between one and the other because obviously uh, this indicates that this is not a symmetrical head that uh, one side which was a lot lot larger it just uh, like I, I my term for that was uh, sort of like a pumpkin head. And uh, this all goes back to the same technology of this overlay uh, technology that we have been using to uh, restudy all of these uh, images, and and it's uh, bearing a lot of fruit now. Oh yeah, we're leaving we're leaving the opposition in the dust. I mean, technologically, they they don't have any idea how to deal with it, Larry. That's why you're getting these these sweeping dismissals when Gary brings it up at this conference. They have no idea what to say about it. They don't know how to cope with it. They've got to hear from their experts, their handlers, what to say about it in the future. So My like Don, well, Larry, Larry was there <laughs> catching them with their pants down. Yeah. yeah, like Don said, you just can't have Lee in the doorway. That's for both sides of the aisle. All our books are not going to be worth anything. It just cannot be. So uh, one question before we let Don weigh in on all this. Larry, is um. Phone ringing off the hook with phone interviews from the JFK community about your new research? No, no, not at all. In fact, uh, <laughs> I had, in fact, I had, a, I had some very interesting correspondence with Greg Burnham, and and he uh, was very kind in suggest uh, suggesting that uh, I uh, I define the provenance of the uh, photograph that I was using uh, in the uh, the overlay the the man in the doorway uh, where. Uh, Robert Groden has used that uh, famous uh, image uh, uh, called the absolute proof uh, that we all have used for so many uh, so many times. And uh, Robert Groden had had first published this in his book, The Search for Lee, o Lee Harvey Oswald, published in 1995. Now, that is the provenance of our photograph, our control 
which in the jargon of uh, uh, facial recognition in forensic science is known as the probe. And the images that we use to test against, versus against the probe are called the gallery. So uh, I, I'm very grateful uh, for Greg uh, that he, uh, he pointed this out, that I needed to uh, specify and identify uh, from where this image had come from, the provenance of that image, and uh, that's the uh, that's the answer to that. And as far as uh, the uh, the uh, specifics of of the uh, technique, well, you know, I spelled it out clearly in the paper. And now that we have uh, this background on uh, forensic uh, facial recognition and forensic sciences, I, I don't think there's any any doubt here on uh, on on the technique. So, okay, well, I'm very comfortable with it. All right, Don. Is the phone ringing off, ringing off the hook for you as far as your 9-11 nuclear research? <laughs> yeah, that gets, that gets general. That gets scoffed uh, widely. Uh, everybody denied. Very, very few people will, will talk about that. I, I was talking to you. I, I said, okay, nobody hates 9-11 truth more than the 9-11 truth movement. And nobody hates JFK truth more than the JFK research community. Well, it just reaffirms, you know, what Gordon Duff said to me when I observed Gordon. I think half of those in the JFK community are working the other side, and, and Gordon said to me, no, Jim, it's 90%. That's a damn lie. I'm telling you, it's a damn lie. It's 97%. <laughs> 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 so this, this, well, it's, fair, it's fairly astonishing. The percentage is simply staggering. Okay, here we go. Um, Jim Mars, what, oh, what did we have? A question mark here for him? Oh, Mars is on the up and up. He may not understand the the development, but I don't have any doubts about Jim. Hey, okay. I had I had one question, Gary. I had one oh. question for Larry before we get rolling on something else. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Larry, have you compared? Uh, Oswald, uh, before he went to the Soviet Union, to Oswald either in New Orleans or Dallas. That's, that's a very that's a very good question because now I think uh, <laughs> it's 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 on the there table. We methodology we can use to resolve yeah. a lot of these questions about that's Doppel. Right. So far, the, right. the real Lee came back from the Soviet Union or not? That's right. That's right. That's right. Because uh, remember when. Uh, Jack White did that uh, this that uh, that collage uh, with all right, the, the different many faces, faces of Lee Harvey Oswald. The many faces of Lee Harvey Oswald, and and I remember right. being at, at ASK nineteen ninety three, and he had this big giant poster there. Right, uh, right. Yeah, now and, you, and now, Larry, you can start testing them one by one and see exactly. if they are or are not. Exactly. You know. that, that's a great point, Don. That's a great point. And, yeah, and it's an excellent it's, suggestion. It's probably going to be the next uh, task here. There we I'm, go. Not that, I'm not that great at the photo analysis, but to me, the, the Lee that went to the Soviet Union does not look like the same guy that was arrested in Dallas. I thought the, the kid that oh. went to the Soviet Union, his face was a little fatter and uh, his neck was a little thicker. Well, Don, we can now test the proposition. Yeah. So I, I think that's well worth looking at. Yeah. Yeah, Don, you got to give him a little time, man. He's, a, he's got more <laughs> research to do than he has time left in his life. Well, I think one of the most compelling uh, observations by Armstrong was the uh, thing about the magic tooth, that uh, so-called magic tooth that uh, the Lee Oswald right. in New Orleans had gone into that fight and lost uh, a, a tooth. Allegedly, yeah. Right, right, and uh, in a fight, and uh, one of his buddies uh, snapped a photograph of him in the classroom, uh, and uh, that was very, very clear that he was missing that tooth, and then when they exhumed the body, uh, in 1981, I believe, uh, Eddowes, when Eddowes had the, the body exhumed, uh, that, uh, that tooth, uh, was, had never been lost. So that, that's always, uh, I've always wondered about that. Well, Larry, more grist for your mill. You got a lot of work to do, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Jared, go back to the conference. All right. Okay. Next up was Joan Mellon. All right. I don't know that we need to even spend any time on Joan Mellon. She's completely subverted a big conference in law in Washington, D.C., financed by a very wealthy man. Uh, he'd flown out to Madison to have me set it up. I had some of the best people available involved here. Then she showed up at the last minute and, and managed to torpedo the whole thing. It was terrible. That was okay. Mellon's well, doing. Well, here's oh, what I, I happened. 
I, I would say I would. I, I got one thing to say about Joan Mellon here, and it would be uh, from the protocols, uh, protocol twelve. In the third <laughs> rank, we shall set up our own to all appearance opposition, which, in at least one of its organs, will present what looks like the very antipedas to us. Our real opponents at heart will accept this simulated opposition as their own and will show us their cards. <laughs> Man. Well, I think a lot of cards are being shown here. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> it's uh, like like a, like a Mary's mosaic. I think this uh, Oswald doorway is a, is indeed a litmus test, just as Gary was suggesting. Yeah. And um, well, w when I dipped it in uh, uh, Mr. Mars's jug, I'm not sure of the color yet. We're still letting it drip on the ground. All right. Now, interesting story about Joan Mellon. She gave her story riding the coattails of Jim Garrison all the way and there was this lady there that uh that didn't know about the jfk show and she kept asking what's the book to read i mean if there was one book um see, give me two books give me two books i said okay you want jim fester's book that we didn't go to uh, okay so you, i suppose you didn't we didn't go to the moon either and i said and the second one is michael collins piper <laughs> all right so she said, Michael Collins Piper, huh? Then you didn't then I, you didn't mean a murder in Dealey Plaza, Gary, because the moon book, of course, isn't about JFK. Now she wanted to know about other things too. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Go ahead. So okay. We gave her that one. However, just by chance, now she didn't know anything. She walked out into the book lobby, and there was Joan Mellon. He walked up to her and said, What do you think of Michael Collins Piper's book? And she came back and said, that lady got really mad at me. And very <laughs> <interesting> <laughs> she said, what did I say? I, I said, well, what did you say? I said, what do you think of Michael Collins Piper's book? She says, I don't talk about other people's books. And besides that, you know. It's Michael terrible. Collins besides that, it's terrible. She doesn't I don't talk about other people's, people's books. books. <laughs> How ridiculous. Okay, so um, I guess. Russ Baker was the next one that came along. He was, I don't know what to say about him. All I did was look on his website. It's all mainstream 9-11. Maybe just go off the reservation just a hair. Or so, so there you go. Any comments on Russ Baker? The one he that did the book? He, he does not and never has impressed me one iota. Yeah, he did Family of Secrets, which is a sort of a John Hankey light. More or less, yeah, yeah, I, I, I've heard him. I, I guess I haven't been that enamored with his with his work. So, mm -hmm. okay, so then we had Sarah Peterson and Katina Zachary. Like I said before, um, it seemed I talked to Lauren. Well, I, I best not say that. I, I don't know what they said. I, um, I mean, I was there, but I don't know what they said. All right, then up next was Roger Stone, and. The only thing that I can see about him is he was really hardcore in with the boys at one time. We're talking about the mainstream New York Times. Well, I don't know if these are exact newspapers, but did a little research there on the fly. And uh, I yeah. just don't know yet about him. I didn't really talk to him. So he did stand up and say that Phil Nelson's book is the bomb and he is the man and all that kind of stuff. However, Larry's... Yeah. Um, something to say with um, Bill Nelson. I'm not exactly sure. So, anybody want to comment on Roger Stone? <laughs> well, I, I think he. You know, I've I've heard him give interviews about Nixon and some of that stuff. You know, I, I thought, hey, I should track this down later, and I, I never did get around to it. And right, I thought he, had he was a right hand man. He was a right hand man to Richard Nixon. He was working in the Rich Nixon White House. I mean, he was in deep. So now he's busted all the way to the truther side. Okay. Well, I wouldn't say I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't say that. I'm. I'm just saying. You know, there might be a couple of gold. You know, uh, 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 nuggets of gold sitting in there somewhere that you you may not have tripped over otherwise. Right. Um, but keep in mind, we're in search of hundred percent truthers now. Okay. Well, okay. So if you were gonna say that, then I guess the the line to say about Roger Stone then would be, in the front rank, and in, in the front rank will stand organs of an official character. Uh, they will always stand guard over our interests, and therefore their influence will be comparatively insignificant. 
Okay. Is All that right. also from the protocols? Yeah, that is. Yeah. So that means <laughs> <laughs> he's got a poster. <laughs> I, I, I've got a TV behind me that serves double, you know, another purpose as a computer monitor, and I've got the protocols up, up on the other monitor there. Okay, I have to tell my story about Robert Groden. <laughs> I busted my butt to get that guy on Skype. Man, there are so many problems when you're trying to do a Skype cast. It really was. So I've really worked hard as a roadie and a sound engineer and a video guy to get Robert Groden to come in there and um, propagandize everyone there. And what happened? All right, what happened was he came on and started talking the usual stuff. And the only thing that I have to report about it is that at least 10 minutes was reported on how those people that keep bringing up the Z film alteration are just not doing justice. I have to say he was better than when he was on black Ops radio where he called us kooks and fairy tales. It wasn't that blatant at this conference because Robert couldn't see the audience. We could see him, but he couldn't see the yeah, audience. Yeah, but adopting that attitude in 2015 is simply loopy. I mean, that's total denial. That means you're no longer in contact with reality. That means you've lost track of the evidence or you never understood it to begin with. He well, hasn't he, hasn't read chapter, he hasn't read chapter 14 of Douglas's, Douglas Horn's uh, Inside the ARRB, uh, number five, number four. Well, that was already 2009, Larry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> As somebody once observed, it's very difficult to make a man understand something that he's paid handsomely to not <laughs> yes. understand. That's right. That well, I, think, I think that uh, the technology has passed him by, Jim. If, if yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. you're discovering of the Newcomb tapes for crying out loud, Larry. That's I mean, right. An unexploited evidential resource that you have developed masterfully, and it's mm -hmm. utterly inconsistent with his position. I mean, for God's sake, hasn't Judith put two and two together yet that this was the guy who told the HSCA that the man in the doorway was not Lee Oswald, but Billy Lovelady, when she herself, using the same evidence, came to the opposite conclusion? She's got to understand something is not right. And not well, only that, and not let, it, let, let us not forget that mysterious trip to Denver with Kenneth Bruton and that uh, very dubious statement that he had Billy Lovelady sign supposedly which we have already verified uh, and had uh, analyzed by a professional forensic uh, calligrapher uh, and expert uh, to have been totally uh, fal falsified so what can I say all right well the other 10 minutes that he put aside during his presentation was Billy Love lady was the doorman it's been proven a hundred times, and these crazy people, he didn't say crazy, he says, but there is just no question about it. It's Billy Lovelady in the doorway. So wherever Robert Groden goes, that is two major points, and he takes a lot of time to, right. to make that point. Now, the Zabruder film is authentic, and it was Billy Lovelady, not Lee Oswald, in the doorway. And he's been blown out of the water again and again and again. I mean, this is pathetic. That he continues to shovel this malarkey is embarrassing. Totally Judith, is any, did anybody, even Judith, has to put two and two together at some point? Gary, well, did, did anybody ask Robert Groden about the, the, the limo turn from uh, from Elm on to Houston or from Houston on to Elm? I mean, it's missing in the in the extant Zapruder film. So if that was a legit film, how come we don't see the limo turning around the corner? Right. Because Zabruder said he started filming when the limo came into view and continued filming until it disappeared under the triple underpass. Yeah, well, even Zabruder himself said he kept filming the whole time and never that's stopped. Right. That's right. I'm quoting Zabruder. Yep. And, and not only that, I, I want to I question what his qualifications originally were uh, to have uh, been uh, named to the HSCA when I'm right. sure there are many, many, many other... Uh, As a well, special I, consultant, Larry, that's a very good question. How did this obscure figure of whom no one had ever heard turn up having right. this extraordinarily sensitive assignment of figuring out whether it was or was not Lee Oswald in the doorway? Or the Zapruder film uh, being... Or the uh, Zapruder film, for example, where 
Where unfortunately, so you were the first one Oliver to present Stone, it on national television. Oliver Stone fell into the hands of Robert Grodin and depended upon him as an advisor in creating JFK. Now, now bear in mind also, Jim, that uh, the image overlay that we used for our uh, man in the doorway thing is the same image that Grodin has used to supposedly yes. identify Billy Lovelady as doorman. Yes, so, yes, yes, uh, yes. yes. And, and he hasn't used any scientific basis to uh, to identify no, him. He's I just saying that it's him. I don't think he understands science at all, Larry. So, you know. I think he's a scientific illiterate. Right. Let's put our chips on the table, you know, and define what is what. All right. So, Don, what um, protocol of Zion does Robert Groden fall under? Uh, well, okay. So, I guess he was on the, uh, the House Select Committee of Assassination. So, um, in the second rank will be the semi-official organs whose part it will be to attack the tepid and indifferent. That's <laughs> killing us. You know, you're going to only want him to attack the tepid and indifferent because yeah, he can't, he can't handle, go after the. He can't handle the truth. The, the correct. Okay, on to Ed Haslam. Ed Haslam was the great guy, a hundred percent truth teller that we had at this conference. Um, he he had some new stuff on Chauncey Holt, which mirrored everything Doctor Fester's ever said. He actually referenced Doctor Fester at least three times during his Chauncey Holt. So what it looks like to me is that. He's steering away from the doctor's marriage monkey, me and Lee. Though he did promote it during one talk, but he's writing a complete book on Chauncey Holt. And I did get a chance to talk to him while I was setting up his microphone. I, I, I said, uh, does Chauncey Holt seem to be the real deal? He said, it sure looks like it. Excellent. Excellent. I'm very pleased cool. to hear that. And that's a good man. One of, one of the most astounding revelations uh, of uh, Chauncey in his book, which I that's really, really amazing, is the fact that uh, the CIA had a safe house in Acapulco where yes. All, yes. all of these, yeah, where, yeah, yeah, where uh, Joseph Paul was, yes, it was uh, one of the uh, main cogs, you know, in getting all of these operatives over there uh, to cool down after the assassination, you know, and, and that kind of thing. So, uh Plus, he had a lot of, a lot yeah. of really good. Where, where else would you rather be after you took out the 35th yeah. president of the United States? <laughs> yeah. Poco, Poco does it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Those pina coladas in this beautiful yeah. sky. My time. Bikinis, yeah, bikinis yep. and all that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. All right. Okay, now, so Ed, Ed, Gary, I was going to say, Ed Haslam is a, is, is a really good speaker. He does a lot of, you know, I guess I would have sat through even a Joan Mellon if I would get to hear Ed Haslam live, I guess, so. Yeah. Now you get to leave the room and come back later. You don't have to sit there. You can go in the lounge area. <laughs> well, if I was there, I'd have to sit through it as painful as it might be. I'd, I'd have I know. to. I, it was good for me. I've given up, I've basically uh, given up my faith in conferences. I'm, I'm going to be resigning from the JFK community minus you three guys. You know, it was really <laughs> just, uh, this, this, I mean, just like Ed Tatro, it just, you know, well, Gary, you want to stay with the OIC, my friend. Well, yeah, that, but look, there ain't no hunt. I'm telling you, I can only think of a couple of people besides you three. Uh, Judy Baker, who a confused one, who we need to have a talk with. And guess what? I'm doing sound in Dallas, so I'm going to have to sit through them all again. But all these questions you have, I can. we, we need to find out. Yeah, well, it's amazing they have these conferences and they don't invite people like Larry Rivera or, or or me or others who could shed light on the most recent developments. We aren't invited. I, we're I, not, I, not going on Black Up Radio. Uh, we're we're not being invited to Dallas either. I mean, it's a step. I, I got prob I got I got something to tell you. We ain't going to be invited to anything anymore. <laughs> we are the outcasts. We are the um, the riffraff. We are the posse. And we're, I don't care. I don't need anybody else. If I got Larry Rivera and Dr. Fester on my team, man, that's like having who? Uh, Peyton Manning. We're, do, we're, do, we're doing what we can, Gary. Uh, the four of us are tr trying. We're doing the cutting edge research. It may take years for the rest of the community to catch up with it, but it's mostly deliberate. They don't want to be confronted with the facts. Their minds are already made up. 
Yeah. All right, we got just a couple more since we're running short on time. They had a fellow named uh, Todd Elliott. He talked about Roche, Jeremy. Uh, there's really not a lot out there, and um, I, I couldn't see any problems with his book. It was his only JFK book, and he concentrated on Roche, Jeremy. And uh, I, I couldn't see any problem there. We had Daniel Hopsicker, which one of uh, my friends in the audience was doing research on these speakers, and he does – bring up Barry Seal, George Bush being involved in drugs. He also talks about 9-11, how Muhammad Atta were all in strip clubs and they were in a little town in Florida that only old people lived in. But then again, when you start looking at it, he does not endorse Jim Fetzer's 9-11 stuff at all. I, I guaranteed he doesn't endorse any of my my stuff on 9-11. Guaranteed. This is Hopsacker. Yeah. Yeah, Daniel Hopsacker. Yeah. I mean, Nobody at A and E nine eleven will touch my stuff. Uh, the, the crickets. Don, we we are the litmus test. They are failing. All right, so Don, Don I, you're the only one that even knows who Daniel Hopsicker is. Go ahead and tell us what you think. Well, he's on the watch. Fall of Zion, he would fall under. He, well, he was. He's now in in the uh, in the third rank, but he was. He, they moved him from the front rank because he was uh, he was working for the Washington Post, I believe, and. Uh, so he was working for an organ of official character, but his, his influence was comparatively insignificant. So I think they've moved him over now to where he can have a bigger influence. But maybe now he's a conspiracy theorist, but he's got weight because he's got the mainstream media uh, background. All right, then we had St. John Hunt. All he really did was introduce people. He didn't have a speech. Judy Baker talked about cancer which was very, very enlightening. I'm going to get a copy for all of us because we don't want to go down that way. We want to do our best and stay healthy. So, um, Larry, did you have anything else about the uh, backyard photos or any before we uh, pass around the last final comments? No, no. I, I, uh, I believe we have covered uh, just about everything we needed to, to cover, and uh, I uh, appreciate Don's suggestion, which I'm definitely going to – start working on as soon as possible because I think uh, that's a very valid proposition here on uh, doing overlays of all of the uh, photographs of Lee Harvey Oswald uh, and see what we come up with. Yeah, uh, Don, um, I, I said, Mr. Tatro, why don't you come on our show? He said, well, I pretty much shied away from radio, but come to find out uh, he was on one of the biggest shows that Seamus Coogan's um, visits his show quite often. Yeah, so. he, well, he was on the Dallas Action. I was listening to it last spring, so this was a few months ago. I, I heard him on there a couple times. Well, then if he can go well, on who, there, who, 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 who could pass up an interview with Seamus Coogan? <laughs> 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 go but don't have no time for Doctor Fetzer and all that Oswald in the doorway Z film silliness. And and stay well, tuned. Yeah, I got a PowerPoint coming up. I don't know if we'll get to it next week. Um, stay tuned for, uh, some more of the who done it. Good, 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 good. Okay. Last question, Don, and we're out of here. What protocol do we fall under? Uh, you know, we're not, you know, okay. I'll look that one up cause I'm, I'm sure we're in there somewhere, but you uh, haven't seen ours up in there yet. No, we're, we're, we're the actual opposition. So, okay. Don, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Gary, say thanks to everyone. I'm out. Okay. Thank See you, you next Gary. week. This is the Thank new JFK show. New JFK show number seventy-eight. We're gone.